today I'm going to be making music with the Nokia Engage, the ultimate gaming phone from the year 2003. So just like when I made music with the brilliant Nokia 3310, I'm gonna be using this phone's built-in ringtone composer, which allows you to make your very own monophonic ringtones. Now, because the Engage was released an entire three years after this bad boy right here, the music composer is actually being updated and has been completely redesigned. They've added in quite a few new features, such as music notes, and that's about it. That <laughs> didn't really add anything else. Anyway, why don't we actually go ahead and try to make some music with the Nokia Engage. Okay, let's just go ahead and hit new tone and we are ready to go. Let's go ahead and put in our first note. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yikes, who would want that? I'm definitely never gonna go this high, but I think I might actually pitch these lower ones down maybe just to get some lower bass notes. Just because these notes don't actually go too low, I feel like they don't have enough bass in them. But anyway, let's go ahead and start putting in a very basic melody. Maybe we'll put that one up over there, put that boy over there. Now, if you already watched my Nokia 3310 video, you might have noticed that this composer actually is a whole lot easier to work with because you can use this D-pad to change the notes rather than having to go through and add in sharp notes, which you do by pressing the hash key. This just makes things a breeze to go through and edit. So let's say you want to move one of these notes, just press the D-pad down to take it down a couple of semitones. Now you get that very ugly melody. <laughs> Also, one other little update is you can actually go in and, oh, wrong button, press this button over here, and you can actually go through and choose the symbol of whatever note you want or pauses, so you can actually just choose different links without having to go through and cycle through, which is kind of handy. That is very short. Maybe we'll throw a little pause in here, we'll make it a little bit shorter. <laughs> it's just a demo, it's all right. Why don't we try and make a melody which is a little bit more complex? Maybe we'll go up an octave by pressing that boy over there. Shorten that note. And then we might also throw in a pause here. Maybe bring that note there. That's horrible. Maybe we'll get rid of that rest and we'll throw it in over here. Shorten that boy by going like that. Bringing in another one. Bring one of those in over here. And that should pretty much be a finished melody. I hope this sounds good. Oh, not bad. That definitely looks a whole lot more complicated than it sounds, but that is all right. At least it's easier to work with than Nokia 3310. Now, I've got to say, I really wish that they made a polyphonic ringtone composer with this phone here. I feel like they actually could have done it because this phone can actually take polyphonic MIDI clips, I think. I haven't actually tested it out yet. I mean, I still feel like this technology should be good enough to make polyphonic ringtones. I mean, it can play games like Tony Hawk, Pro Skater, or Sonic N, so why can't it make polyphonic ringtones. Anyway, I guess I'm gonna to have to compromise like I did last time and I'll record separate tracks into Ableton and I can stitch them all together. So I guess it will be a little bit of cheating, but I just don't wanna make any monophonic songs because that is boring. So anyway, let's go ahead and start making our first track. We'll back out of this. I forgot how to use old phones. So now before I actually go through and start putting in any notes, I might go through and choose a tempo. So we can actually go through and choose a pretty decent range from 250 all the way down to 50. I think I'm kind of feeling something around 125 BPM maybe. Go ahead and press OK. Let's just test that out. Oh, that sounds horrible, but I think it's the right tempo. Get rid of those boys and we can start putting in our first little notes, which I think I might use for the bass notes for some kind of chord progression or something like that. So let's just go ahead and choose some notes. I might actually make these some super long boy notes. Let's just go one of these. And I think for the next note we'll go for Something around here. That one there should actually do. Maybe we'll pitch it down. And we should be pretty much done. How's this sounding? <laughs> Yuck. Ah, uh, that is the wrong note. Maybe we'll go for this boy. We'll pitch that. Ah, it's loud. Pitch that to around there. And that should be better. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> It's recorded into Ableton. Yep. Yep. Oh, yikes. That is horrifically average. But I might be able to save it by adding in some harmonies. So let's just grab this note here. We'll pull it up to around there. I think we just need to change this last note. Maybe we'll pull it down around there. And we should be pretty much good. Now, surprisingly, I don't actually think this sounds too bad. I think it's just this second chord. It sounds a little bit rough. But apart from that, it's sounding all right. But I think we can actually make it sound a little bit better if we go through and record in a third layer. So let's go ahead and pull these notes up. Last note could probably go around there. Oh, no. 
Cool sound, okay. Yeah, that'll do. Let's bring it into Ableton. There we go. We have our three note chords. Now, sounding a little bit rough. I tried to put this reverb on earlier just to help smooth things out. Don't know if it's fixing much. This is what it sounds like when it's dry. Doesn't sound much better with the reverb. Maybe I just need to EQ it a little bit and then I think I'll move on to the next part of this very average song. We'll just go a little something like that, pull that down for now. And yeah, that sounds acceptable. <laughs> Let's move on to a melody. Right, I think for this main melody, I'm actually going to go through and mix things up a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Ableton before I record any sounds and I'm just going to put on a whole bunch of different effects. So I'll go for some distortions, maybe some reverbs as well. Basically just want to try and make it sound like a lead guitar or something like that just to help it stand out from these very average chords. Maybe I could even just try bringing in one of these pedals. Is that going to work? And we'll just go for a little bit of distortion, crank that up. Yikes. That is not sounding very good. I think what we might actually have to do is put this into a group and then create a new chain. One of these can be dry and then we have a really distorted, super reverby one in this channel. Pull that down. Sounds a bit better. I'm not really the biggest fan of the big bunch of noise that happens at the end of the note. I don't really know if I can fix it though. I think it's just something to do with the cheapness of this chord that I use to record the audio. Maybe we could also throw on a delay. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just throwing on a whole bunch of random stuff. Definitely better than the plain noise by itself. I think it should definitely work better with these chords. Let's go ahead and unsolo that. I don't think that sounds any better. New tone. This is really weird because it applies the effects to the entire phone. <laughs> yeah. New tone. And let's start writing in some melody. Now, I kind of got a melody idea. I'm thinking something like this. That was actually bad. How do I write this out with notes? I think I'm going to have to start off with a very long pause. Boom, 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 boom. Shorten you too. And I think I might need to pause. Let's throw some more big boy pauses in here. So we'll go for one of those. One of those. That should be pretty good. Oh, nearly. Okay, we just need to change these last little notes to be a little bit shorter. Wait a minute, not quite. I forgot that I have to pitch these all up an octave. Luckily, it's actually easy to do, so we just need to press that, that, boom, boom. That should be it. Okay, how's this sounding? Not bad. Okay, next step. I want to try bringing in some extremely basic drums. It's probably going to sound really bad, but may as well give it a try. Not bad. Maybe we could mix it up a little bit. What if we go? That's a bit better. Very laggy though. I think I might just draw it in with MIDI. There we go. That actually sounds listenable now. Not bad. Drums are a little bit loud. The instruments sound a little bit dull, but let's go ahead and start bringing in Maybe a bass line? And the only question is how am I going to do this? I think I might actually have to put a pitch shifter on to make it sound more like a bass note. There we go, we've got some bass. <laughs> that sounds horrible. I think I might actually have to have some of the non-bass note in there so I can actually hear what notes are playing. <laughs> this is so rough. <laughs> okay, that is going to sound good enough for now. Let's go ahead and start drawing in a bass line. Oh, those are some super deep. Menu sounds. Nice. Okay, for a bass line, I think I might use some shorter notes. And then I'll throw some pauses in. I don't know if I go pause before or after the note. Like that, or... Oh, let's go offbeat. This is going to sound very cheesy. I think I need to go through and get the basic progression of the notes first, and then I can try adding some more fancy notes, because... I need to switch this up. This doesn't sound good. I'm just starting to realize that this is a very tedious way to make music. I really should have added in some copy and paste functions because that would have really sped up this whole process. Now, onto the last note. What is it? I can't remember. <laughs> no, I couldn't even get it right. Just throw one extra pause in there, make it a little bit shorter, and now we can go through and start 
spicing up this bass line a little bit. Yeah, that is definitely not the best thing that I've ever heard. So I think I might actually have to wrap it up here for this song, just because I don't really see it getting any better. So I think I just need to copy this over a couple of times, throw on a couple of different effects here and there, and that should pretty much be it. Enjoy. There we go, that was insanely average. I'm not gonna lie, I think I actually enjoyed the song that I made with the Nokia 3310 more, and this isn't even a gaming phone. So now what I think I might do is I might go through and make another song with the Nokia N-Gage, but this time I'm actually gonna be a little bit more familiar with all the buttons and stuff, and I think I might also simplify the song. I'll definitely not use any drawn out chords or anything like that, because those sound like garbage. So, song two. Hopefully this one's a bit better. So now I'm thinking for this next song, I want to do something that is just ridiculously heavy. So I've gone ahead into Ableton and I put on a whole bunch of distortion effects. We've got this big chain over here. We've got a couple of different layers. All of these are just pitching it down so we can get some heavier bass sounds. The only thing that is really important is that when you press any buttons on the phone, we get some super distorted bass sound. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds really good and I especially love how this is all in real time so I can actually hear it coming directly out of the phone. I can't hear any of the normal phone sounds or anything like that. Oh, nice. Actually, I kind of want to try something out. <laughs> love me some distorted Nokia ringtones. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, let's head back over to the composer and we can start making a super heavy bass line. And shuffle. Bass line with that note there, and that should pretty much be it. That should be all of the notes that we're gonna need. Let's go ahead and have a listen to our finished bass line. Yeah, it doesn't sound too bad, but now what does it sound like once we put our distortion on? Because it kind of forgot to switch it on. Oh. That sounds good. That's actually unreal. That sounds super decent. Okay, now let's go ahead and record this over into Ableton and I can move on to the next instrument, whatever this thing here is. I've just taken the exact same sound and I've just pitched it up an octave and I've also put on some reverb just to make the sound a little bit spacey. Sounds a bit sharp at the moment, but I think it actually works when you play it on top of the distorted bass. Not bad. Okay, now we just need to go through and choose a little progression. I think I might actually keep that note there. Throw in a pause, make this one ah, super long. Drag that out like that. This is starting to look totally ridiculous with all these pauses in here, but I think I finally got the right timing. Yeah, there we go. I'm just throw in a whole bunch of pauses again. Go like that, go one. Uh, throw the other note back in there. We'll throw in some pauses. This is Getting very confusing. Okay, so that took like 10 minutes of trial and error, but I've finally, finally got the right timing. So here is our finished higher melody. Sounding pretty good. So let's just go take that over to Ableton like move on to something else. I'm kind of feeling like I need a delayed arpeggio in here or something like that. Now in comparison to the last instruments, this one here should actually be super simple. So just grab one of these notes. I think we'll throw it, ah, <laughs> throw this one at the bottom. Then I can go there, throw that one up an octave and then can go back down. I'm just gonna shorten them up a bit. 
And I think that should pretty much be it for this little arpeggio. Super simple, let's just throw some delay onto it and maybe we'll EQ it a little bit as well. So now when we play it, we should get a nice little effect. Hey, sounds good. I think I might actually automate some of the delay parameters just to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of randomness, but I'll take care of that later on off camera. But anyway, apart from that, I've got some drums in here, which are super basic. And I think that should actually pretty much do it for the second beat with the Nokia N-Gage. Got to wrap it up here because I'm running out of hard drive space. But anyway, as usual, I've gone ahead and added on all the finishing touches off camera. And here is, turn off that light, my second song made with the Nokia N-Gage. Enjoy. There we go, that was music made with the Nokia N-Gage's ringtone composer and a little bit of Ableton as well, I guess. I'm actually so glad that I finally managed to get one of these original taco versions of the N-Gage to make music with, even though it cost a lot more than it should have and it took like three or so months to finally arrive, it was totally worth it. And I mean, at least it didn't end up being a fake phone like this Nokia 3310, so that's always a bonus. I gotta say, I actually really enjoyed using this thing as a note sequencer and then running this through Ableton for all the effects and stuff like that. Even though it was a little bit clunky, I actually feel like it was kind of fun to be limited by the basicness of this thing. And also it was really easy to make accidental timing mistakes, which I actually think led to more interesting melodic rhythms or something like that. But anyway, I think that's actually gonna wrap it up for this video. So I'll see all of you in the next couple of days. Hopefully, for my next upload. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.